You're listening to episode 182 of the Christian Travelers Network. Today's topic is Alaska Adventures with Tammy and Bernie Gerald. You're listening to Christian Travelers Network, the podcast and platform where travel stories, community, and scripture combine. Hey, Christian Travelers, I'm so glad that you are here. We have some awesome guests who just survived some interesting Alaska winds and are going to be sharing a little bit about how the Lord brought them to Alaska. But before we dive in, I want to once again point you to our website, christiantravelers.net, where you'll find other faith and travel resources. And we are always looking to help connect other Christian travelers to like-minded individuals so that you feel connected and supported wherever your adventures take you. But without further ado, Bernie and Tammy moved from a small southeastern town on the Atlantic Ocean straight to the Alaskan bush. Alaska, the great white north, the last frontier, land of the midnight sun. Yep, that Alaska. Since moving there, they felt called to capture the amazing color and beauty of Alaska for travelers to take home as tangible reminders of God's creation. Thus, they fa- thus they founded the Great Land Bracelets. Hi, Bernie and Tammy. How are you guys doing? Good. good. Doing How are well. you? <laughs> doing really good. A little bit warmer than you guys. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I you hear that you guys had quite a snow drift over the holidays and lost yeah. power. Yes. <laughs> yeah, had a windstorm come in, 60, 70 mile an hour winds and just covered the driveway with snow that was on the other side of the yard, pushed it all back and so kind of snowed us in for a while. A blizzard when the sky was perfectly clear. <laughs> yep. That's definitely different That's for us too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so can you tell us a little bit about yourselves what brought you to Alaska in the first place etc um, I'll start okay. in bleh, 93 94 somewhere in that neighborhood maybe it was a little later than that I came to Alaska doing the actual tourist thing drove up uh, with my parents from Georgia across the United States through Canada spent I don't know, about a month here in Alaska and fell in love. Um, it's the only place that when I left, I had a few tears running down my cheeks while I was driving. Um, and I've always wanted to come back, but Tammy? <laughs> well, I got accepted to the University of Alaska Fairbanks as a senior in high school. And I graduated from high school in Florida. And I presented my dad with the acceptance letter. And that was a, mm, no, <laughs> you're not going to Alaska. So I went to college in Georgia, back with, you know, where family was. His brother was about 20 minutes away. Um, then Bernie and I got married. And we'd been married about eight years and yeah. decided, you know, you love Alaska. And I've always wanted to go to Alaska. I'd never been, did not get to go to college here. Mm-hmm. And I said, have you just thought about looking for jobs? And so he applied to a position and we got the call in July. They asked us to come up for a site visit. So we flew for a whirlwind three-day trip to Bethel, which is about 40 miles from the Bering Sea, spent about three days there, accepted the job, went home, had the biggest garage sale we've ever had, and then moved in September. Yep. Thank goodness. It was a culture shock. <laughs> and we've been in Alaska ever since. Yeah. Cause love it. We, you know, when we had snow down south, it shut down the state. And within three mm-hmm. or four weeks of moving there, we had our first snowstorm and we just, we have to drive in this. What are we going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've fallen oh, head over heels in love with the state. Completely in love with it. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So you guys have both always had an interest in Alaska and then things just kind of fell into place. Uh Um, Tammy, you mentioned that it was a bit of a culture shock. Can you expand on that a little bit more? Um, I grew up with my grandparents, my paternal grandparents owning an orange grove in Florida. And so we never paid for oranges or orange juice or anything of that nature. And when we got off the plane, we went to our house and dropped off our luggage. And 
um, his boss had actually lent us some bar stools for the kitchen counter and an air mattress and bedding. And that's all we had because our furniture didn't come for another two months. Well, we went to the store mm-hmm. to get some items. We needed milk and orange juice and bread and eggs. Normal thing. Toilet paper. Um, a gallon of orange juice was $20. This was in 2005. A four pack of one ply toilet paper was $10. Wow. I have spent $60 on a watermelon. In the bush. Wow. (laughs) We moved. This is a funny story. We moved out of the bush and back into uh, the road system to Anchorage in 2007. Mm -hmm. And Bernie had an eye appointment. And his eye doctor's office was in one of the malls. And we were Mm -hmm. talking to the, um, not the doctor, but the lady who helps choose your eyeglasses and contact fittings and things. And she said to me, have you seen the price of watermelons here? And I said, no, I haven't. We've only been here a couple weeks. What are they? The grocery store at the other end of the mall has them for $5 a piece. I grabbed my wallet, left him and ran to the grocery store, bought two, came back and offered her one. And I still came out $50 a head. (laughs) True story. Wow. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. The prices so, were insane. And they're worse now, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um with prices and the cost of things, is it just more common for the uh Alaskans to live off the land? Or is that just something that they find a way to budget into life? Both. Mm-hmm. Um, there is obviously a lot of hunting and fishing and mm-hmm. living off the land up here. Gardening. We all garden. Everybody gardens. We have a very short growing season. You're lucky to get a good hundred days, maybe a little bit more where we are in the mm-hmm. state. Obviously, mm-hmm. Alaska's huge, so it varies. Um, yeah. yeah. But we do a whole lot of growing um, and uh, sustainable hunting if if you're able to do that. Uh Um, Surprisingly, where we are in Alaska, we're sort of the breadbasket of Alaska, and there's huge farms around here. Uh So Mm -hmm. we buy a lot of local produce in the summer Uh because what has Mm -hmm. to come up from Washington and California is so expensive Uh because of the transportation costs. Uh Yeah. And if a barge breaks down or we have a wreck with one of the semis. Or bad weather. We only have about three days worth of food in the state. And we had some um, south of us on the Kenai Peninsula this week. We had a little, right around freezing, and a pretty good clip of wind and some slush on the roads. And we had a bobtail um, semi from Cars Safeway heading down to Homer, full of groceries. He jackknifed and Mm -hmm. laid on his side. And that so they have holes in the grocery store because there's no food, and that's normal. That's wow. completely normal. It happens totally. It happens here, and we're only sixty minutes from Anchorage. Goodness. Yeah. Okay. So this is there's a, a lot of extreme. I think with Alaska, yeah. is that fair to say? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you process <laughs> totally fair. Yeah. 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 Um, so. I I feel like a lot of people that would be a big thing to get over, and yet yes. you guys made the transition. Um, I guess like what's kept you there? I guess. Yeah. For me, I I think it's the adventure. Mm-hmm. Every day is different, mm-hmm. like we've mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We grew up in the South. Basically, you do everything the same every day. There's not a lot of variety. <laughs> Ain't nothing the yeah. same up here. No. Because, <laughs> I mean, yesterday <laughs> we had high winds and it was it was reaching... Ten below. Four, yeah. Four, five, ten below. Yeah. Today it's 11 above and going to be a beautiful day. I'm going to get out and actually work in the yard some. Work on the house outside. Because mm-hmm. I may not get another chance. Yeah. For a week or two. And yeah. honestly... 11 degrees is reasonably warm for this time of year. Best temperature to split wood is zero. Yep. 
it's like glass and you tap it and it just cracks. It's beautiful. <laughs> Your face is precious. <laughs> Yeah, we learned okay. so much stuff. <laughs> yep. So, ironically, guests uh, who are listening, we attempted this interview um, yeah. about a week or two ago, and then they lost power due to this big windstorm. Well, mm-hmm. my sister in law did a like three month internship in Bethel. And mm-hmm. while she was there, she got this book by Kristen Hanna called The Great Alone, which is about Alaska and living in remote areas. And it felt like I was doing research while reading fictional things about <laughs> just like the extremes <laughs> of Alaska um, and, and just like the winters and losing sunlight and all of that. It's just mm-hmm. very impressive that you guys like function out there yeah. honestly it's a whole different world <laughs> yeah it, it is well what time is it now it's approximately what 10, 10 15, 15 a.m mm-hmm. uh, the sun will actually come up in probably another 15 minutes yeah we haven't actually had sunrise yet but from um the wow. week of thanksgiving until the week last week of january first week of february weather dependent we do not have direct sunlight at the house where we live Because we have, we're on the front facing side of the Chugach mountain range out the front of our house and out the back of our house, we have the Talkeetna mountains. We're, I mean, spitting distance. They're right there. And so the sun doesn't come up high enough to come up over the ridge of the mountains. So the last week of January, we get about a minute, minute and a half, and we'll see our first shadow across the floor or on the wall and we'll both run outside to the front porch and just stand there for a full minute soaking up that sun we we'll start getting our suntan <laughs> yeah then we'll come back in and be like oh man we gotta wait till tomorrow again and it's like one o'clock <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> yeah, i'm getting really excited because we'll start having sun again on the house i can't wait <laughs> man yeah. that is crazy uh-huh. Okay. So in the midst of all of this, you guys kind of started your own business. You found Uh that like tangible things matter. Can you Uh tell me a little bit more about that? Well, people come here, they spend a lifetime, a lot of times dreaming and planning and saving and, and doing without other things to come to Alaska because it is truly our country's last frontier. There are millions and millions of acres that no one's ever laid eyes on. The other day, a man discovered a new glacier. We didn't even know we had. He just happened to come across it while studying um, Google Earth. And it was confirmed by... um, Yeah, the the, the geological USGS. NOAA. NOAA, NOAA. that was it, NOAA. And the USGS, yeah. Never been seen before. No one knew it was there. So you, you have this vast landscape, and most people come typically for two weeks. You can't see a drop in the bucket. It's beautiful. In two weeks. So you choose very wisely where you want to go. What part of Alaska do you want to see? Because you're not going to see it all. We've Mm -hmm. been here almost 18 years. We haven't seen it all. No. Um, (laughs) And so they come and they see these places they've always dreamed of and they fall head over heels. Pictures don't do it justice. There's not a picture that anyone has ever taken. There's not a TV show anybody's ever made. Nothing that does Alaska justice. And they go home back to, you know, flat land or wherever they are, the ocean. And then they realize, I'm never going to go back. And all I have are my pictures. And a whole bunch of bills. The bills are coming. <laughs> so it, we we created Great Land Bracelets so that people could, it's an affordable bracelet. It's not hundreds or, or thousands of dollars. I think our most expensive bracelet is 40, 45. We've got one or two that are in the 80s, but yeah. Sets. Uh, most of, They're sets. Most of them are around $40. 35 to $40. And yeah. so it's an affordable gift that you can either give yourself or take back for family. Um, and it will help you remember... Alaska. I'm wearing one now that we actually have not introduced and we're going to be introducing it um, a week from Thursday and it's January skies because in January 
our sky is sapphire. It is the most beautiful blue. And then you have all the white snow on our mountains, on the ground, in the trees, loaded everywhere. And then you have the ice crystals in the, in the air that you can just see. Sparkles. And the snow sparkles like diamonds. And then you have the almost black fir trees that go up the mountains. And everybody has fir trees in their yards. I mean, unless you've plowed your yard completely clean, you have fir trees. And so it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a reminder because most people come in the summer and they miss a whole world in the winter. Oh, yeah. It is, if you have come out here, if you've come 10 times and if you've only come in the summer, you have missed so much, so much. So we created the bracelets. So, and we do them from not just around locally, but statewide. So that if you want to have a reminder, something you can go look at and be like, oh, that's right. The sky was this blue or, oh, I'm not the silver in this is because it reminds them of me of the ice crystals in the air. Or, oh, the white is for the snow on the ground or the ground or the mountains. And it's that tangible. Somebody comes up to you and says, that's a beautiful bracelet. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> and now they're trapped. <laughs> it's like, let me pull out my wallet of my kids' pictures. <laughs> Bracelets. We, we say that our, it, we've got jewelry with a story to tell. Mm -hmm. When we create the jewelry or the bracelets, we have a story behind it. But at the same time, when you get your own bracelet, it's your story. You right. have the memories to go with it or the memories or the dreams you want mm -hmm. to go with it. Because mm -hmm. we sell to a lot of people who have never been here but go, ooh, I want to go there. Yeah. And... um that's sort of the focus of our jewelry is it's a story to tell a lot of people send gifts to friends and family members who have been here their their friend or family member have been here and they'll tell us i've i've never been there but they tell me about this place all the time and so i found you and i want to show them i'm listening <laughs> to what you say and i know you went to skagway and i'm going to get get them the skagway bracelet and it's just a sweet gift that they can give their friend or family member that gives that tangible memory mm -hmm. and also gives them that remembrance of that wonderful trip. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh -huh. that's, that's amazing. And I love uh, just like how detailed and thought, thought out um, all those scenes are that you are creating with that tangible memory. Uh -huh. um, speaking of memories, um, do you guys have any, um, memories either with your business or, um, in your time in Alaska where you have really just felt like your faith was challenged or where you felt your faith grow a lot? Mm -hmm. And Bethel, it was challenged every day. <laughs> <laughs> we lived, there was three jets that flew between Bethel and Anchorage mm -hmm. every day, every day. And we lived in the at the spot where the planes would turn after they've taken off from the airport to head to Anchorage. And every night about 720, when the last jet took off, I'd run outside on the deck and wave at everybody because they were that low. They waved back. It was the PLJ, <laughs> the promised land jet. So yeah, living off the road system in any Bush village is hard. Bethel was a, it is a hub for 56 other villages. So large by village standards. Mm -hmm. um, it is hard when you're out there and you can't get groceries because one, they're astronomical. Two, they may not have made it in on the barge yet or the price of fuel. We were filling up our, our fuel tank every three weeks for the price of $1,600 to heat our house. In 2005. In 2005. That's challenging. Our first electric bill was nine hundred dollars. The most we'd ever paid for electricity in Georgia was maybe two fifty. Maybe in the height of summer with the air condition, you know, chugging. Mm -hmm. There, there were some challenging moments. We looked at each other at a few points and we're like, "What do we do?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that challenged us both. Um, I guess personally, tr to trust the Lord. And then it grew my faith because I saw how he allowed us as a, not only as a couple, but as individuals to grow 
with him to realize that I don't, I don't care what the price of something is. I can afford it. I made it. You know, mm -hmm. I created oranges. You're going to have oranges. You know, don't worry type thing. Um, but yeah, it has not been, I don't think quite as economically challenging on the road system. No, not on the road system. It, it's still challenging, but not yeah. as bad as it was. No, no. Um, for me, because I tend to do more of the work around the house and mm -hmm. outside, I have not where we're living here, although it's come close, but we lived in Seward for a while in the woods in a small cabin. I came out oh. to walk the dog. I stepped off the porch and I realized just to my left was a baby moose. And to the right of me was Mama Moose. And that's bad. She was very upset. Uh -huh. mm. Me and the dog got to the truck really fast. And we never kept our, we never locked our car doors, car doors. Because, for that reason. For that reason. Because if we needed to bolt and we could not get to the house, we could always jump in the car. Mm. And that's what and, they did. <laughs> and here where we're living now, um, we have we a pet have, lynx named Kitty. <laughs> we have a lynx that is around the property, yep. and she'll just come up the driveway and walk around. And she's a big girl. She's, she's beautiful. A big oh, she's beautiful. gorgeous. But we also have one moose that has twins that's in our front yard, mm -hmm. and a moose with a single calf. And is in, pregnant. And is pregnant now in the backyard. backyard. <laughs> so you have to be cautious when you go outside. Mm -hmm. We do have active... Lee, not so much in the winter, but in the summer, bear, mm -hmm. coyote, coyotes. Wolf. Well, yeah, they're mm -hmm. they're all around where we are. Yeah, and fences mean nothing to them. We are in their territory. God put them here first. God has allowed us to be here, mm -hmm. so we're sharing this land with these native, wild, big animals, mm -hmm. and that's something we have to be cautious of. But simultaneously. It's so fabulous to be working in your garden and you look up and realize there is a beautiful moose just munching on the grass in the woods on the 100 trees, feet yeah. from you. Mm -hmm. Scares the jeepers out of you. Oh, yeah. But it's beautiful and you can praise the Lord for his creation right there and experience something you're not going to experience anywhere else. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. No. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, we're nearing the end of the podcast. Um, if Do you have any other tips for Christian travelers or anyone who might be thinking about moving to Alaska? Moving to Alaska, um, I would recommend finding out where you want to be because it is expensive, but it's not uncommon in Alaska for people to move around. Yeah. We don't worry so much about where you live and what you're going to do in the terms of mileage as much as it is in hours drive, mm -hmm. because it's from here to a church may be 20 miles. In the summer, that may be 25 minutes. In the winter, it could be an hour and a half, <laughs> if you depending out, on the road. If you can get out of your driveway. Unlike the South, we don't have churches on every corner. We don't have all of the denominations in every city or town or village. Yeah. In the villages off the road system or in the more remote areas, you're lucky to have a church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It may or may not be your denomination. The house but we bought in Bethel was actually the synagogue. We didn't know it at the time until after we bought it. But <laughs> It was where there was a house. They just had house church and it was the synagogue. And we didn't know that, but we're like, we live in the synagogue. Uh -huh. Look at us. We were so proud but, of ourselves. But yeah, there are church <laughs> homes. Finding a church is a little more challenging mm -hmm. in Alaska. Um, in the bigger towns, Palmer, Anchorage, Juneau, Fairbanks, Fairbanks, Wasilla, Palmer, yeah. this area. They're big cities, big towns. Mm -hmm. They're going to have multiple denominations, multiple churches. Mm -hmm. Um, we're an hour from Anchorage. We're over 30 minutes on a good day from, 
uh, Wasilla, 20 minutes from Palmer, give or take. Wasilla being the largest town in the Matsu Valley. Yeah, and the Matsu Valley is the size of Ireland. <laughs> so even our valley is Huge. large. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. trying to find a church if you're going to move up here, usually when you move, you're going to find try to find a place near your work or in an area you want to live in. And I recommend doing that. But if you're looking for a church, you might have to look a little harder and look a little differently. That was one thing that really took us by surprise is you didn't just go to your local Southern Baptist Church or your mm -hmm. local Presbyterian Church because well there weren't there weren't none. any <laughs> there weren't <laughs> none. no and so when we, we have done house church we have done house church absolutely We've just worked with families that were close that were believers mm -hmm. not really starting a church but worshiping together mm -hmm. we know people who um, have started who churches. have started churches and yeah. we've helped with that mm -hmm. um. But that is a challenge from a Christian perspective is it's different here, especially if you're from the South where there literally is a church on every, every corner. corner. <laughs> uh, for me, I would give one piece of advice for both a traveler who's just coming to visit and someone looking to move. For mm -hmm. the people who want to move to Alaska, understand that it is very common, very common to not have indoor plumbing or running water or electricity. That is just as common as the sun rising and setting. <laughs> totally normal. For travelers, we don't have rest stops like you have in the lower 48 where there's flush toilets and water. So you might want to pack a few rolls of toilet paper. We have outhouses on the side of the road. So you want toilet paper and you want hand sanitizer. Interesting. And they're few and far between. So when you see one, stop. <laughs> stop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's those types of things that people come and they're floored. It's It's been so funny to talk to people who are visiting and they find out we live here and they're like, I've never seen anything like this. You, you also, another piece of advice for a traveler don't plan your trip from a map. No. For example, I know people that land in Anchorage and want to go visit Seward. And on the map, it's about 10 or 15 miles apart. Right. To drive it and actually get there is two and a half hours. Yeah. Because you can't take the bridge over the water because there's no Not bridge mm -mm. over the water. You have to go all the way around the coastline. And through two mountain ranges, you it's 15 miles if you're in an airplane or a helicopter. Yeah. You have to go through the mountain passes, and it's, and it's an adventure. The roads are few and far between. There is one loop around Alaska that connects Fairbanks and Anchorage, mm -hmm. and two roads in from Canada. In the summer. In the summer, mainly. And one of those is pretty hard in the winter. Mm -hmm. So... Get some of the magazines or the catalogs or the books that talk to you about traveling mm -hmm. because just looking at it on a map and you go, I'm going to go here and here and here. You All in not, a day. You, you may not. No. There may not actually be a road to connect those and you have to go some other way. And allow yourself extra time because we have winter more than we have summer. And summer is when all the road construction happens. You are going to hit road construction even if you never leave Anchorage. Mm -hmm. You are going to hit it. So allow an extra hour, hour and a half for stopping, waiting on the pilot car, going through the construction, and then hitting the next construction because you will. <laughs> it will happen. Mm -hmm. In the summer, it has taken us before, what, nine hours just to get to Fairbanks because of all the construction. It's about, from our house, it's about a seven-hour mm -hmm. drive. Yeah. And two hours of it was just dealing with construction on the road. So doing what Bernie said, realizing that it's not a clear shot. We're, we don't go as the crow flies anywhere. Mm -hmm. But realizing that you're going to hit construction all throughout and, and, and plan that into your itinerary. And if you end up don't with rush. extra time, hey, good for you. But Enjoy at least you don't, you don't miss your plane or you don't miss the train or whatever you're going to. 
the boat yeah. if you're going out fishing. You don't want to miss that. That's the hardest thing for, for visitors is realizing we don't work on an interstate system like mm -mm. you do down south. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We live on the only highway open year round in and out of the state. It's a two lane road, 55 miles an hour until you get about 30 miles from Anchorage. Mm -hmm. And then it opens up to a four lane, 50, 65. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Tammy and Bernie, so thank you so much. Um, one of the questions I always ask our guests is what has been the biggest God moment in all of your travels? Hmm. There's so many. I know. Uh, we've talked about some of them, obviously. Um, I think the biggest God moment for me is that he has blessed us to be here yep. for 18 years and no real desire to leave. Alaska is an interesting place personally for people because either you're here and you love it or you're leaving next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's not much of an in-between. There's very few people that go, eh. Yeah, no. I'll you stay won't. here because, eh. Yeah. Mm, if you're at that stage, you're not staying in Alaska. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's true. I would agree with that. I, I, I can't pinpoint one every time I get in my car just to drive oh. to the grocery store. You know, our biggest fear when we got on the, because there's no mountains or anything in Bethel. There's not even trees. It's just tundra. When we got onto the road system, um, we were just thrilled with all the mountains and the beauty. Oh, and it, it's, it's, it's indescribable. I often tell Bernie, I don't, I can't imagine heaven better than this. It is that beautiful. And we were always really concerned we would start taking it for granted. Getting bored with it. Yeah, or getting tired of it or getting um, worn out that we don't get direct sunlight at our house for two months of the year. We have daylight, but we don't have sunlight. Um, and I think that for me has been that God has never let me get bored with it. Mm -hmm. Every time I go to town, I see something new. Every mm -hmm. time. There's a canyon mm, six or seven miles from our house that we have to go through to get to town. And as you're coming down the canyon back towards our house, there's a mountain sort of sat back at about nine o'clock, if you were looking at a clock. And near the ridge of that mountain is a scar, and it's in the shape of a cross. Yeah. And you can't see it in the wintertime because it's obviously filled with snow. But I look for that cross Every time in the, in the spring and summer and fall before the snow hits. And every time I lay my eyes on that cross, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, how can our listeners connect with you outside of today's episode? Um, we have our website, mm -hmm. greatlandbracelets.com. Mm -hmm. um, just like it sounds, great land bracelets, all one word. Mm -hmm. And we also have an email if people want to contact us. Um, they can use info, I-N-F-O, info at btjliving.com. We also have social media. We're yeah. on, um, let's see, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. All under great land bracelets. I think that's all we're under. Yeah, yep. all under greatlandbracelets.com. And Google. Google works. You can just Google us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I will make sure to have links to all of that in the description below. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much for sharing your story. It's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so we much. We have thoroughly enjoyed it. We yes. love talking about Alaska, if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Well, Christian travelers, I hope that you have been inspired today to go visit or maybe even move to Alaska. And if you're looking for some related episodes, I encourage you to check out episode 171, Using Photos to Remember God's Role in Travel with Brenda, or episode 63, How to Travel Journal. Um, and until next time, safe travels and God bless. <laughs>